Gano, Sego, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this start to a long weekend. I thought I'd, I'd host from outside today. The wind is beautiful uh -huh. and uh, it's blowing in some amazing people here. We have our uh, uncle Dehande, grandmother Renee, Sherry joining us. And uh, we're uh, we're gonna go for a nice journey together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uncle's gonna talk about the star connection. Mm -hmm. Yes, welcome everyone. And so nice to see you again, Renee and Tata Hande. Um, it's so lovely to to be in the same same screen as you. And had it not been uh, the pandemic, we'd be in the same room as well and, and learning from each other and just having that energy together and learning more about the star connection, which is something that I'm just so grateful that we have teachers like you and uh, people who have kept that that in, that in knowledge intact and it's just wonderful that you're able to share that along with us and and also our viewers so welcome grandmother renee and Terehande. yes it is a beautiful day yes it is such a nice day to learn uh, every day is a good day to learn and especially i notice a lot of people are looking in the sky well in the evenings and it is amazing because I think it's time. That's what they told us that we will once wake up and we will look into the stars and we will start, things will start coming together in our minds, our teachings. And so we are very blessed to have a very, um, <clears throat> as they say, a powerful um, reminder, a powerful reminder that we are connected to the, to the stars. We are connected to the sky world. We are connected with the universe. And so what better way is to validate that today? And so here we go. Let's go. I'm anxious. Awesome. Well, I'll put this um, screen share on and uh, hope this works. Is it on yet? Not yet, Share but I'm, I'm here for you. Share screen and then highlight the area under. <clears throat> and this is our second visit with uh, Uncle. Okay. Share. Oh, there we go. You just popped up. Lovely. Okay. Yes. Are we able to see that? Yes. Um, is it big and enough? It, no, if you can go to the and and make it a bigger screen and then it'll be full screen. I mean, you can see it, but you can also see your panel there. Let's see. Does that work? Uh, no, it's there's a, a I think it's under no. mm -hmm. If, it, if it's a PowerPoint, just go back there. And if yes. it's a PowerPoint, just click, click from current slide and it should go, it should go full screen. We are so blessed to have the younger ones to know this technology. Over by slideshow on, on the top, on the top, um, ribbon you'll see a slideshow so click on slideshow okay and yeah and then go for the current slide so let's play from that, start that. play from current slide yeah it's done yeah perfect okay thank you well, thank you everyone. It's Dea Hyundai again, speaking to you from Six Nations, a Mohawk of the Turtle Clan. And Ganyak um, Gahaga is my language. And today we're talking about the star connection. So today we're looking at 
But we, uh, I always refer back to the um, language because the language tells us everything. And so that first word that you see up there, it says, So that's two words. And um, just to sum it up, we, in our language, we understand that everything is alive. And I mean everything in the sense that we are, uh, there's an inner universe and there's an outer universe. And there's a similarity between those two. And so what our understanding is, this is a great intelligent energy that completely surrounds us. And that's not to say that all energies are good, but this one here is what we call creation. And so at one time, this energy uh, said to itself that it wished to expand its knowledge. And to be able to expand its knowledge, it had to put us, it had to put its parts in different places of the universe so that it could collect, um, collect information. And so that's how we, we talk about that. <clears throat> and so what we say here, there's the, there's the word up there and I've broken it up into bits and pieces of information. And as I told you uh, two weeks ago that our language is polysynthetic, which means each of its parts has a particular meaning within the word. It's kind of like an actual full sentence within each word. So we're going to look at these two words here to understand what this energy is about. And so we start with the pronoun, which is the K-A. And that pronoun makes it the it. And it's also a female pronoun. And anything that has a female pronoun in it tells us that it's very, very powerful. And it also tells us that it's modified from something natural. And I don't mean uh, modified in a sense of changed, but made in a way that it comes from a natural um, area and it has been somehow changed to be in its present form. And so what we're talking about here is the, the energy force. This satsta part is that energy force. And that energy force exists in everything. The SER is a nominalizer, which means that it's a noun maker. So it makes everything in front of it into a noun. The A is a joiner, which connects it to the great or the immeasurable endless part, which is the Goa part of it. So that one word together means this is an immense, immense uh, entity that has been nounified. So we say that this is the force or this is the energy and it's made from something natural. The second word, sa'uyera, the s a uh, tells us that it is, uh, it's kind of like a repetitive. It tells us that this has no beginning and it has no end. It's precise. I guess the easiest way to describe it is it's like a circle. So we don't really perceive it to have a end or a beginning. It's a seamless energy. The oyera is how something was done. So right at the beginning, this was already in existence. So even though we were, use words like the beginning, we really can't define 
what that beginning is. But what we know is that this here is that way it's been put in motion and it's been put in a way and that's its natural force. So here we say that everything that whatever exists was initially created in the form of thought or spirit. And that's similar to that first presentation that I, that I did. And it's this thought that we can sort of dwell on in a, li in a little bit because we know that, or we, we certainly feel anyway, that we do have thoughts. And those thoughts are invisible. But the fact is we know we have them or we certainly believe we have them. And that's what we're talking about when we use words like spirit. And it was the thought that brought two kinds of energy together. And one form is known as matter, and the other form is known as breath, or pure energy. And, and we, as human beings, are made of both of these two energies. So here, I've got the one word at the top, which is odzista. And then there's a second word down in, in the middle portion, and it says odzistok. Well, both of those words are referring to stars, but they're just referring to it in a different, um, different light. So our pronoun here is the O. And from that first word that I showed you, it had a K-A beginning. Well, that was the pronoun for that word. When something is natural, it, is, it has that O prefix. And the dist part is the spark. It could be a flame, it could be a spot. And so these are all the ways that we have of describing the star and so the o at the end is actually a vowel and this is, tells us how the star exists so it just exists as that flame or that spot or that spark that we see in the nighttime sky the next word odistokwa now adds on to the meaning a little bit and as you can see the o is still the pronoun, which means it's um, natural. And the dist part still, still, still means that it's the spark and it's the flame. And the H in that one is just an apathetic uh, aspirate, which means that it has to be there um, to make the word complete. And the KW is a reverse. So when we're thinking about the stars and we say, well, how do we know that it's intelligent? Well, in the background on this picture here, you can see sort of like a cloud formation in the center there. And that cloud formation further out, you can't see it at all. Basically, all you're going to be seeing is just a, a space. Well, what's happening here is these um, stars, of course, are made up of a huge combination of materials. And so these materials first exist as an atom. And when two atoms are floating around in space, um, they recognize that they have something in common and they'll start to bring themselves together. And they keep on bringing themselves together along with literally billions of other atoms that have the same attraction to each other. They are close enough so that they realize that they need to be or want to be together. So as they grow closer together, now we'll see a cloud forming and that now 
tells us that these atoms are so close together that it's actually forming something that we can see. So something that we were not able to see before had the intelligence to bring itself together until it was visible. And that, that cloud continues to compact on itself until it finally becomes the star. And that star then has a lifetime all of its own. And that KW reversive meaning, the ending of it, tells us that that star will cease to exist at one time. And when it ceases to exist, they say it goes into supernova. And that supernova literally explodes and it sends all its, <coughs> all its parts into thousands and thousands <coughs> excuse me, directions. And now it's completed its cycle. So a star had a beginning and it had an ending as well. And so these are the things that we're constantly um, looking at. So there's the star at the top again. And so this time I'm showing you here that O here at the top is natural. The dist part here, as we said in the other um, slide, that that's the spark. And the O is how it exists in its natural form. Now what we're doing is we're saying ga and we're placing, replacing the O with a ka. And as I said in the previous slide, that ka now tells us that something has been modified from its original state. So this, you can see how similar these are. And the A on the end here, that is how this gadzista exists. And when we put that together, at the bottom here, it says Gadzista, means the flame of life. So we, as human beings, were actually have this flame inside of us. And it's created from something natural. What's natural? The exact same way the star was formed but it existed in its natural state. So when we were given the spark, it was called the uh, flame of life because that's the heat that we have in our bodies. And so, as I said, the purpose of this great intelligent energy was to co collect information and we as human beings were also experienced from a, a per perspective that we don't, not many anyway, some people do, can remember something of their previous life before they were born here through the portal of their, their, their mother. So when we were born, we were given this heat and we're also given a breath and I'll speak more about that too but I just want you to be aware there that our language connects us to the stars and it's, we're made of exactly the same materials that's in the, the outer outer atmosphere so in a way we are in fact like stardust in our telling of creation, we talk about this world that existed on the other side of the stars. And so this is an artist rendition of what that outer world or that upper world looked like. It, looked, it looks very, very similar to the world that we know. But the difference is there that they're all pure energy, which means they don't have a physical body like we do as human beings. These energy beings that we, we talk about, we talk about as they're people 
of the sky world. And so what happened a long, long time ago is in that sky world, this um, woman, um, she went and she married this chief and that's the chief that's standing beside that tree that's knocked over. Well, in their world, that was called the celestial tree. And that celestial tree means that it was the tree of life. In that world, that tree provided all the light that they needed it provided all the things, all the essentials that they needed. It provided the food that we needed, it provided the air that they needed, and all of the things that needed in that sky world, that tree was that source. And they were told never to, never to hurt that tree because they depended upon that tree for their life. And so this, woman that married the sky chief she was um, she had become pregnant and she had a desire to taste the root of that tree and she hired her husband to go and dig that uh, root up and as he dug he accidentally made a hole and that hole is what you see at the base of that tree some say that the tree was actually uprooted and so he didn't come back right away from digging a hole and so his wife got really impatient and she went over there to see um, why he was not coming back and basically he was he was in shock he didn't realize uh, what he had done because he peered into the hole and so sky woman the one that you see falling there um that was see that's his wife and um of course she starts peering into the hole too and she's really really curious and she leans over too far and so she falls through that through that hole and it says that she grabs onto a number of things as she was falling. And so um, we, we understand that it's going to be the, um, uh, the beginning. And so this here, they say that this world is seven layers of stars. Some people say seven layers of stars. And they say when we look up into the stars, into the sky that's only one look so that's so if you multiply that by seven that's how far away this other dimension is this other this other place so <clears throat> so she comes down and of course there you can see the birds in the sky up here and um, I'm shortening the story as much as I can so we can so we can get a good picture of what happened. So she's falling through the sky. And the animals that were here on the earth notice that she's falling through the sky. And they say, we've got to do something because we don't want her to get hurt. And so as the telling goes, it was a great turtle that said, well, you can put him, uh, put this person, this entity that's coming down, you can put her on my back. But at that point, the turtle's back was barren and there wasn't, there wasn't any land on it. And it wasn't until Sky Woman actually landed on the back that she realized that um, it was barren and she didn't know whether she was going to live or whether she was not going to live. But she had brought with her seeds from the sky world, but she didn't have anywhere to, 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 um, to plant them. So she hired the animals and one by one they, they dove and uh, they brought her uh, earth 
down up from the bottom of the up from the ocean and that's what she used to spread uh, spread around the, the back of the turtle as she danced the shuffle dance and it says that when she when she danced that that dance she went around in a counterclockwise circle and she was moving her feet back and forth back and forth and she was spreading the earth as she went and so she was also dropping seeds as she go as she went and so what you're seeing here is the earth after the turtle provides the shell or this bedrock and the natural process from the water that was drying on the back there created mosses and then it created other things after those mosses died until you get to see the entire um, back being developed with, with new vegetation and so Sky Woman lived but as I was saying before that she was pregnant when she um, she came down and this is actually a, a photo uh, uh, artist rend rendition of the grandmother this is this is grandmother here because the mother died during conception these two brothers here were the twins that were born and so one was called Skowiskara and the other one was called Tarunhiwago. So Skowiskara means the one with crystals. He was crystal-like. He uh, doesn't show it in this picture here, but it said he had a crown uh, right through the center of his head and it was very, very sharp. And um, even in the tomb, the, the, in the mother's womb, the two boys were arguing and so when one was about to be born he says there's a proper way to be born and the other one says nah he says that's 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 nonsense he says i'll just come up any old way that i want and they argued and argued and argued and they, they, they never really settled it but they did settle that one was going to come first so that one was Tarohiwago. That means he's holder of the heavens. So when he was born, his, um, his grandmother uh, grabbed him and she wrapped him up. And while she was wrapping him up, the second one was being born. But she didn't actually observe the, the birth. And the second one, the Skawiskado, the one who is called Crystal, or Flint sometimes they call him, he had used his his crown, and he came out underneath the armpit of his of his mother, and so she passed away. So these boys now were were growing up very quickly, and Skawiskara he was very jealous of his brother Tarunhiwagum, and uh, he would tell that his his grandmother, he would tell his grandmother that. It was Tarunhiwaga, holder of the heavens, who had killed his, their mother, which wasn't true. So, um, grandmother, she gets so upset with Tarunhiwaga, holder of the heavens, she grabs him by the scruff of the neck and, neck and it says, Wahode Sanundi. So it means that she threw, him as three, she threw him out as far as she could. And so now when he's, he's out and about and he has, he has no, nothing to do, he's, he's been thrown out, he's, he doesn't have his, um, uh, <clears throat> he doesn't have anything to hunt with, so he makes himself a bow and he makes himself an arrow and um, then he's going around and he's shooting his arrow and he misses his shot. So he goes to um, he goes to, to look for his arrow because it wasn't like you could go to the store and buy new arrows. They were pretty scarce. So 
he goes looking for his arrow and as he's looking for his arrow where it came down it was into a sort of like a low laying area maybe a dried out uh, swamp or something like that and he's walking across this um, sort of like clay base and the sun is shining and you can see like the mirage coming up and through that mirage he sees another figure approaching him and he's sort of taken by surprise because he didn't realize there was anyone else uh, there except him and his family. So the uh, figure approaches him and calls him by name. He says, you're Taro Hilago. And he says, yeah. and he says, yes, I am. And he says, I know your mother. And I know your grandmother. And he says, I know what happened to you. I know that your grandmother threw you out and you were really, really disappointed and really didn't know what to do and you might have bad feelings about it. But he gave him this teaching and this teaching, he, he tells him that, you know, your grandmother is a really decent, uh, a decent being, a decent person. And um, she really does love you. But what happened was she was believing a lie and so that's the reason she threw you out. She says, but you can't hold this against her. So he says, he he tells him to keep on, <clears throat> um, keep on loving her, not to um, not to shun her in any way, shape, or form, because they were the only ones here. And so f um, finally. Um, he says to the stranger, he says, who are you anyway? And the stranger said, I am your parent. So we understand at this point that this parent then gifts him with a bow, the most beautiful bow ever, the strongest bow, the most accurate bow, and he says, I, you know, I want you to have this. He also gives him a little packet of corn as well. He says, you're going to need this. And so that, that part of the story kind of um, ends right there and goes on to, on to other things. And so at that point in the story, I was thinking, well, you know, Taro Hiwago, he already had a bow, and now he's got the most beautiful bow, the, the most accurate bow. And I wondered, gee, I wonder what he's going to do with, with two bows now that it's not exactly like he can shoot with two bows. So uh, when they grow up, when the two brothers grow up, um, Taro Hiwago and Skawiskada, they both had to nature. They add animals, they add plants, and they complete um, the landscape of the world over. And so it was Taro Hiwago that went out and he went out to inspect this all of this beauty that he, he was seeing. He was looking at all the different grasses and the medicines in the grasses, and looking at the ground, and you can see the trees are all perfect. All the grasses are perfect, the flowers, everything, water, and the fishes in the water, and on and on of all the things that he was, that he was looking at. And so he said, I have to inspect all of this, like the this is uh, one of our medicines. And so all this variety of plant life that he's looking at and, and making sure that everything is just perfect. Because at this point, he says, now it's time that I introduce human beings into this world because all the things here are all there for him. All the medicines are there for him. All the flowers are there for 
and everything has been given a purpose. So each one of these medicines that we're looking at were given a particular purpose. And those purpose is to enhance our life and keep us healthy. And so these are some of the things that he's looking over. And so even the, the deer, you know, he makes them so that they're barely visible. And um, he says, everything is right now. Everything is right for the human being. And so he also looks at the, all the different animals, make sure the animals, they receive their instructions too. And I'm just going to give you the instructions that the deer received. Um, they were given the instruction that they, them and their family, and what I mean by family, we have many other animals that give us their life as well. And so they were given that understanding that when um, at a certain time of the year, when that when the leaves fall, that's the time to go hunting. And they're the ones that then give us their life. And so if you're if you're a bow hunter, um, and you're of the right mind, you put down your tobacco before you went into the bush. And you've asked that the animals not be afraid and you don't want to disturb them. And when, when they're ready, they'll come right up to you and they'll stand right there in front of you. And that first one, we're supposed to send that one to our brother and our sister. And so those are the understandings that we have when we, when we go hunting. So, uh, Creator, sometimes we call Tarawihiwago Creator. He has many names, really. He said, I understand that now is the time is correct that I introduce human beings. So what he did is he picked up the clay and he said, this clay is the energy of the earth. And as I said earlier on, we're made up of two things. And so we're made up of two kinds of energies. We're made up of the energy of the earth, which is the clay. And we still today refer to ourselves in that way. And we say that I am of such and such a clay. And that clay becomes your clan. We say, what clay are you? And so that's the reason why that we um, understand that we're made of this clay. And so Creator takes that clay and he starts and he makes it into the shape of a human being. And as he's making it there, he's also thinking that he's got to go the next, um, the next step. And so what he's doing He's combining the clay, which is the energy of the earth. And he's now, it says, That means he took his breath and he pushed it into that clay. It says three times. So three times he gives this clay his breath. And at that same time, when I mentioned to you, before about that Gajista, that flame of life. This was also one of the very first things that he gives us. And he said, this is your gift. So when you take that breath, when we as a baby take that breath, we've taken those two energies together with this understanding of how our lives are to be. And in the um, first presentation, I also told you a little bit about the opening address. These were also instructions that were given to us so that we would know how to live in this world and how to interact with not only other human beings, 
but of all life forms. And so we have those two things coming together. I had mentioned earlier that Tarohiwago had received a bowl. And I really didn't understand at the time the significance of it. What I did understand was that he was getting teaching, but I didn't understand the depth of it. So that first word there is a'ana. So these are the most precious gifts given to human beings. So we're giving that we're given that understanding of the bowl. And Creator also said, there are many other gifts I'm going to give you as well. And they're all very, very precious. And he says, the other thing that I'm going to give you as human beings, I'm going to give you Owana. Owana is your language. So each and every person in the world was given their own particular language. And so that is very, very a precious, precious gift that where we're given. Where also the next one is says Garana. And that Garana now means our song, which means that we have a responsibility to protect that and to keep that alive and to use it for the intent that it's, it's meant to be used for. And so it exists as our song. And we say these are the song of the, our mother, the earth. That's that heartbeat. That's that drum that we use. And we also use our voice to make that song, that particular dance. And so we were also given another gift. The one underneath that one says, Gasana. Gasana is our name. And our name is very, very important because when our name is given, it's given a, a purpose as well. It's given um, a goal to something that needs to be learned in this, in this world. And so when we go, for instance, to collect our medicines, or when we send somebody else to get medicine for us, that's what that person takes with them. He takes your name. And when he finds the, the patch of uh, medicines, he'll go to that patch of medicines and he'll put his, med his, his medicine down, which is the tobacco. And then he'll speak to those, what we say, leader plants. Some call them grandfather plants or grandmother plants. And when you speak to them, what, what you do is you say, this person here has this name, this is his name. And he is the one that needs your help. You are the medicine plants. And so the medicine plants there um, will be told that we're going to take one of your relatives and so we ask you that you send all your energy with those relatives that we have attached to this name. And that's so the medicines will know where they're going to be used and the purpose that they're going to be used for. And so those leader plants will say to their relatives, one of you is going to go with this person here that's come to to bring the medicine back. And we want you to go with all our strength. And even today, we know that plants thrive when we speak to them. And they do speak to each other as well. And that's the energy that we have. The word at the bottom is skana. So when we understand these things, uh, what we end up with is we end up in a very peaceful state. And you'll notice here that I've what I've done is I've taken that E-N-N -N 
and made them blue all the way through. And that's because all of this knowledge comes from the language. And so I was thinking, these words are all related. These words are all the precious gifts given to human beings. But personally, I really didn't understand the bowl part of it. But it was also the part that opened itself up. And it happened to me when um, I went target practicing one day and I pull that bowl back and let the arrow fly. And I guess sometimes we're not really paying attention to all the things that we should be paying attention to. But this particular day, I noticed that sound of the twang of the string when I let it go. And as I was watching the arrow fly, I could hear this hum. And that was, um, like that. And it just struck me that the E-N in all of these words, that's what it's about. It's about vibration. It's about frequency. Because the metaphoric part about the bowl is you pull it back. And when you pull that back, what you're doing is you're gathering the energy that you would gather energy from your ancestors, from wise people, from people of the past who have learned things before us. And so when you let that arrow go, when you let that string go, that propels the arrow forward. And so now that takes this into the future. And so that vibration is the key to everything. Everything, everything responds to vibration. Everything does. So when we're using our words, like the second one there, Owana, it says that we are to be using our words when we do our ceremony. So that vibration has already been put into our language so that when we use those ceremonial words, the entire cosmos realizes it. It senses it. And so the same thing when we're doing our songs, we're creating a different kind of vibration, a different frequency. All of these frequencies have meaning and it all has meaning to us because we are part of this cosmos. We are just like the stardust that we're made from the same things that the stars are made out of. And so when we're using our name, the entire cosmos recognizes us as being an individual, as being like nobody has the same fingerprint. Nobody has exactly the same personality. That's how unique this, this cosmos is. It's made that uniqueness in, our, in us as well. It's also given us the instructions of what are these keys that opens up this energy because this energy this vibration this frequency is usable we can use that in our everyday life to feel well and whatever it is our thought whatever thought that we have remember at the beginning i talked to you about thought that we know it exists all our knowledge has been placed in our languages so that we're able to use it. And so those are some of the things that were given to us to, to be holding on to very, very precious. 
And when we're using these vibrations, when we're exercising this, when we're meditating and all the things that we do to be in a spiritual state, that brings us to the last word at the bottom, which is skana, which is peace. And that's just exploding as it's so, so profound. Along with all of these things that I've spoken about already, I look here and I say, what I see is I see the other thing that's been given to us. And I call this the heart piece because we hardly ever talk about the heart piece. The, the greatest energy that we have as human beings is in the heart. We think the brain is the most powerful thing, but it's not. It's the heart that's the most powerful thing. And so this word here, Atokata, the AT is a reflexive, which means it brings the action back to um, the, the the pronoun, whatever the pronoun in the verb in the verb is. Dukkha, that part of the word, is our feelings. Um, our emotions and there's two parts of this feeling we have the five physical senses and so we understand those as the physical senses but there's also five other senses that are invisible and they're just like the visible senses except they're not visible just like thought so there are things like creativity, intuition, gut feeling. Uh, Any time that you have these, um, say, um, that just seems not right. That's that feeling that's not physical, connecting with you and telling you that this is not a correct situation here. The uh, H in this word is just an apathetic aspirate, which means it's just there for pronunciation. The T-S-H-E-R, we talked about that before as a nominalizer. We have three or four different kinds. And the A again is how it exists. And when we talk about this, you say, well, what is this word? This word is how we talk about wisdom because that wisdom is not coming from your brain it's not coming from your logical point point of view it's coming from deep within you and that is that sense of feeling it's that heart sense and it's the thing that's not talked about enough because i think I think we're maybe starting to see it now because we've been into the, this, this lockdown kind of lockdown and lock off situation for such a long time now, it seems over a year, that we're actually realizing just what it is that we're missing. We're missing that heart piece. Um, we miss our friends, we miss our family, we miss all of those things that are necessary to feel well inside. You see, if you look at the, the earth, they, they have pictures of the earth and they show around the earth the magnetic field. Well, the fact is everything has a magnetic, or I wouldn't call it a, a magnetic field, but it has an energy field. So just in case uh, we, we have some scientists out there, that energy field though is real. 
it's kind of like um, they tell us to stay six feet apart from each other. Well, why is that? Um, it's because our energy field as human beings is actually six feet. So our energy is actually reaching out. So when we get close to a tree, that tree has got an energy field too. And we start feeling good when we're touching that tree because we're exchanging energy with that. And it's the same thing when we talk about anything here on earth, when we're in close proximity. And even with people, you say, oh, you're in my space. Well, it's because we feel that energy from another person. Um, some people can even putting their hands like uh, you hold your two hands out in front of you, you start squeezing them together. You can actually feel the heat when, when you get to a certain distance. By the time you're about an inch apart, you should be able to feel that heat. And you can, you can try that too. That's that, that's that heat that's within us. Because that heat that's within us, we're also given an understanding. And that understanding is that matter and energy is only temporal. It will not have a long life, not like the energy. The energy continues, but the earth energy has to go back to the earth. So when the earth energy goes back to the earth, the heat goes as well. And that's why the body goes cold is because that spark of life is no longer there. It's already gone back or going back, returning to its source, collect with all the collected memories that it had here on earth. So in a way, this short telling is kind of like giving us our purpose here on earth and how we're interconnected with everything. There's way more to it. But that this is the this is the, the short the short version of that. So <clears throat> all of that, you know, leads us leads us right back to the beginning with um, um, how we how we exist. So we exist in all of these forms here that you're seeing on this on the screen. And so we are in fact connected to the stars. There's the Gajista, that's that flame of life, comes from Ojista, which is the star. And so you can see from our explanation here that this is how we understand it to be. And I was um, leave some time for some questions. So if I shut this off, I should be I should be on screen again. So well, we just had a lot of uh, really great comments in the comment section. It's just been just amazing. Um, that people really love this, that they needed this. It's really good learning, especially when we're talking about energy and where that energy comes from. And, and I love, love, loved how you broke down the words and explained every single piece of that word and how language is so, so robust. Um, and, it, and it's just amazing. I could feel, I, I yeah, I was, we, I have some great messages here. So, uh, Sherry and I have uh, angles from two different places. I could feel the energy myself. And it's, you know, someone, well, for myself, I've done a lot of my own inner work and in connecting to the energy. And I really, I really believe that that's been a, a huge support of my wellness and balance in life is really believing, you know, what I've heard from you before. And you just, you are so patient in the way that you speak. I feel like it gives me 
that opportunity while you're just delivering it to go there. I don't know if I froze. I feel like I, my connection is yeah. not so good now upstairs, but. <laughs> yeah, Did you want to add something? Um, so that the energy, the energy has keys to it. In other words, we've been given all the instructions of how to unlock that energy. It's, um, you see it in people, uh, for instance, um, in negative people, it shows up a lot, a lot easier. In a sense, you get some people and they go around and they say, oh, I always have bad luck, you know. Uh, this morning when I got out of bed, I stubbed my toe and then, you know, then I, and then I spilled the coffee on my shirt and I had to go change my shirt, blah, 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 you know the thing. <laughs> and what's happening is they're using that opposite side of that same energy because they're always thinking that something bad is going to happen to them that's the thing that they draw draw to themselves that energy attracts itself negative attracts to negative um and it's the same thing with people who who have good luck all the time and and they say oh i just came back from the from the bingo and i want a hundred bucks da, 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 da. And they're always happy they're always smiling and you know it's like um, not, that's not like 100% of the time, but you can, in fact, manifest the things in your life that you want simply by thinking about it, uh, looping about it. Um, you know, like this, <clears throat> it, it can go to the opposite extremes as, as well. Like, for instance, you get millionaires or billionaires and all they can think about is making money. And that's all they do is because that's all they think about, right? So, and the rest of their life is a shambles. So they're they're not thinking in a balanced way. They're totally out of balance. And it's kind of like the um, the situation that we have on Earth right now is to try to sway those energies, the, you know, the the destructive energies. Um, we were warned these foretellings, these prophecies that were given. Um, it's even in the creation story. It, even in the creation story, it talks about you know, the black snake that's underground. And of course, we know that to be the, the or we believe it to be the oil that they're, <clears throat> they're pumping through these, these, these veins. Um, that's really a really destructive thing. And it doesn't have to be that way. There are alternative sources. We have been given, we've been given wisdom. We've been given the things that it requires to circumvent the, you know, global warming, if it's just human activity. But it's at such a point now where we're not gonna see it in our lifetime, we're going to have to wait a couple of hundred years before it's going to revert back. If we're able to get enough people on board to say, we have got to be conscious about this because everything is connected. You know, when um, I just heard a doctor the other, the other day and he was actually talking about the virus and, and it's the only doctor that I've heard who's who's been saying the same thing that the since probably around the 40s i guess when we start getting into the industrial um the industrial race um you know we started off with the radio back in the early 1900s and we've we've progressed right up to 5g right now and uh, <clears throat> these things are what's it's killing the bees um and that's what the scientists are telling us is is our communications that important that we have to to kill the bees because if the bees go 
what's what's going to pollinate what's going to pollinate the the, the plants that's that's we we depend on them there there are there are little gold nuggets really i mean can you imagine going around plant, uh, pollinating all the plants that would be that would be insane um and so all of the other destructive things that are going on you know look look at the waters for instance um we have there are ways to clean that up um it just takes willpower it takes pushing it takes um, how do we convince the industries and the governments and the banks for instance that this is about life living quality life not about how much money you can put in your bank account you can't eat that that's what everybody says you so um, we can live a productive life but it's going to take us all together we need to be doing this together so that when we're together as a group and we're all thinking the same thing that makes it that it just multiplies that power over and over and over again so that we're able to do these things and do it together but we do need to be working together for that for that common goal and i see more and more people that's uh, coming aboard listening to uh, our ways it's it's not it's not rocket science it's really common sense science you know what were the, were there any questions in the um, in the chat Um, not really questions, just, just thank yous, gratitude, mm. love for the connection and the explanations. And, uh, someone, well, some, um, there's a partial kind of message about a UFO said they will help with the electric, but she didn't finish the comment. <laughs> So if you'd okay, like to we're... put that, the full comment in, that's interesting. I'd be interested to look at that. Grandmother Renee, I saw you jumping in and out, falling out, falling out of the conversation. I think Wi-Fi at this time of day, especially, um, is challenging sometimes. Like, I know I'm having an issue, but I'd love to hear. I know you love these conversations. Like, this is just so magical yeah. to have conversations like this. Oh. It, uh, it validate uh, a lot of things. And I like how we're sharing these things because it's almost like hearing, hearing Jake and I'm on all of us talking about when we would sit and talk. And um, I like how she said, um, our, um, the farmer's aldermark is ours. She said, we shared those messages. That's where it originate. She said, this is our message. This is how we knew the stars and plants and all the creation. And they took it and they wrote it. So so she said, we can use it. It's ours. <laughs> and she talked about how um, um, those figures, and we talked about those figures in the sky where, where the stars are. She said, it's just like watching um, uh, the story unfold because you'll see everything. The stars are still there doing symbols to represent creation story and one will always stick in it and um i was just going through this and it talks about um even about um weather and everything we all knew that it's just like there's so much more but i was i was getting uh tested <laughs> by fading in and out and there was there was i was there was a, a <laughs> connection and i wanted to I wanted to um, record that, but I was so busy trying to get back on, trying to get back on. And so I said, well, this must be for another time. So, <laughs> but this was valuable. Um, it's just reminding me of a lot of things when I was sitting with, with Jake and Reg and all of them. And it's so, I'm going to have to listen to it again to, to mm -hmm. or even go and visit you. <laughs> <laughs> to talk to <laughs> you just put a fire under me. <laughs> I have. 
since I have you, I'd like to ask that because now, so the, the, the comment in, in here, actually I'll share it to you right, with you right now. And Sherry and I have these conversations. I'm going to share, a, I'm going to share, and I think I've shared this with you as well, Renee. Um, and I think it's just because I really, I, I am connected in so many ways, but Sherry and I, when we're on the phone or if we're, you know, in, you know, using electricity, sometimes when we get into really beautiful deep conversations about spirit and just how we're guided by our ancestors sometimes it's just like i i believe that some of my messages come from from energy like electricity or technology where we could be speaking about something so powerful and it's in it's sherry eh? the same thing happens all the time all of a sudden we'll be like this is so exciting can you imagine if it's gonna if it happens and it's kind of like we're questioning ourselves and then it's like, oh no, don't question yourself. Boom, disconnected. And we're like, oh my gosh, it's real, it's real. And and then next thing you know, it manifests. And so it really divinely connected. And I think that um, I say divinely, but I'm I'm learning my language about it's really connecting to spirit and you know, and and the star world and and everything beautiful that we've been given by mother earth and and just being alive today and if it wasn't for our elders you know the wise ones that yeah, have been no. able to share this knowledge with us like i think that's why sherry and i get so excited about what we're doing here on this platform it's really to share this knowledge because our we are so full right now of gratitude to be able to hang out <laughs> with the 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 old wise ones and enjoy the life, the good life. Anyway, I think I'm, I'm going to drop out because my, my thing just keeps going circling. So I don't know if I keep cutting out, but Sherry, would you like to kind of close off for us and everyone have a wonderful long weekend? Mm -hmm. I think Renee wanted to say something. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad that we use that line, use the language, the breaking of the language and how we're connected to that that frequency it relates that fire and, and that's what we're told every creation has that fire and there's a lot of other people that are coming to that awareness by like you said talking about our water we do have that power to clean up our waters that's by using good words we can all gather at the river and sing to the river just like just like we do to our foods this is why it's so important to use that vibration of, of, of kindness and goodness and when we're talking to our foods, when we're talking to our children, this is what it means that, that that medicine that comes from the heart is the language because I always call it the language of love because it comes from that place of, that everybody can speak of because everybody is in that place. I don't know my language. I said, yes, you do. It's, it's a language of love. Once you start using that language of love, you can associate. It breaks it up and it defines in, in here and in your spirit. So not to worry, but as long as you're speaking the language of love, you'll see all the parts come together, just like our magnificent uncle did to us for today. And that's what our people, need. the people all over the world need to see how our language, our original language defines creation in all of us that that spark. And so um, we, people complaining all the time and they're wondering why things are, in chaos they need just like uncle said we need to raise our vibration up we need to stop complaining and raising our vibration up so that we can make change to the entire world yeah it's so true and we were you know we we were been doing some work with the town of oakville and they have um and we're just speaking of energy here and they have sub subtitles on, you know, a closed caption, I guess, and the subtitles. But every time they said, uh, every time the word Jody was mentioned, it would it turned into a different word, and it turned into God. And so Jody, they could not get Jody in there. They they end up getting God in there. So of course we all had a little chuckle, right? And and it was just really funny. But when we're talking about energy and really manifesting it, you know, we we did that with with the land that we have um when we were when we were asked like we just kind of like we went there we did we we took we took charge and in three months later 
you know, we have, we have a space and, and it's just absolutely amazing when you, like you said, uh, you know, coming together and using that energy and using that energy in a positive way, because we know too, as humans, you can either have that really negative energy that takes you down a really slippery slope, or you can, or you can get up to higher vibration and your, and your life changes and you, it's like you're walking on air when you get into that high vibration and it's just, and it's amazing and you don't want to leave it. It's almost, it's, it's almost addictive um, to, to be in that high vibration. And then you know how your moods, how mood swings and stuff like that, that it just really is not the place where I want to be when it's, when it's a low vibration. So I really appreciate all those, all those words about vibration and energy and then particles and, you know, coming together it like it was just you know it, it's just amazing and i wish we would have more of this um not only for ourselves but also in schools to teach more of the na the natural the natural environment or the universe and and it, and it will come now because we have we will have a center and we'll be able to tell uh school kids when they come to our center the, the different ways of, of looking at things so you know i really want to thank both of you for always um for being with us, for, for joining us. And uh, I just want to make a couple of announcements. Um, the next week we have uh, both Renee and Grandma, Grandma Renee and, and, grand, and Grandfather Neil uh, for Tea with Toda on, uh, Wednesday, on Wednesday, May 26th. And it's from seven until nine. And as you remember, th there were so many great conversations about Remember When. And so we're continuing those conversations again next week. And we also want to let you know that uh, we also have a, a garden, a memorial living monument for the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls that's being built up at Country Heritage Park with the co cooperation of and uh, partnership with Minicon. And uh, so we've also applied for, we're also in the top 10 of the David Suzuki Prize uh, for the few, I think it's called Future Ground. And that'll be released next week. And so we'll be looking looking to our viewers to, to vote on our garden. And then we also have our good friend, Dennis Windigo, um coming back again. And he'll be with us for four sessions, four evenings next next week, I believe. And he'll be talking about, diff uh, he'll be talking about trauma and really having a very, having a, having a very robust conversation with him. Uh, he is a fantastic teacher. Uh, fantastic uh, psychotherapist, and we are just honored that uh, he's he, he's also working with us and with Grandmother's Voice, and we can't couldn't be any happier to have all these wonderful people that are sharing their gifts. And I want to thank both of you, and of course Jody, uh, for hosting us and to and to be here. If you don't mind, I'd like to actually just acknowledge as well our partner. Um, and and I and I don't really like to use that language, but Renee, what would we we call uh, Country Heritage Park and Jamie and the team over there? Do we call them our partner, our relative? What do we? Because remember, I said Earthwalkers. We're all of the one mind. We all working together for our Mother the Earth. Earthwalkers. Earthwalkers. Yes, right. we include everyone. And so we we just are so grateful that he reached out to grandmother's voice and and asked first it was more for guidance how do we heal people and i'd like i have this space in this land and then to open up his heart well we're, we're working on on opening him up even more which is so fun he's an amazing person and their team awesome. there is is a lot of fun uh nyawa so much what a way to move into a long weekend where we can all look at this at the sky and think of our connections to the star world now while we're sitting around our fires and being with our families have a great weekend Perfect. everyone yes have a great weekend yeah. Hello, uncle yes thank you uh, have a beautiful 